Star Wars Outlaws looks pretty cool. Massive is developing the first truly open world game in this iconic universe, and instead of a Jedi, we'll be playing as Scoundrel K. Vess. She's a fan of stealth, firearms, cool vehicles, and rising above those in the galaxy who want people like her to stay beaten down. It's a brilliant premise, but given Ubisoft is behind it, many red flags are already flying. Firstly, it has a lovely jubbly season pass. Now, you might laugh in my face and proclaim the presence of a season pass as normality these days. We've been putting up with them for years, so why start complaining now purely because it belongs in a Star Wars game I'm excited for? The thing is, I've never stopped slamming publishers with this sort of slimy behaviour. Season passes are designed to hold content hostage, to make titles we pay full price for feel unfinished right out of the gate, because we know more will be on the horizon. When you look at how they're marketed, that much is abundantly clear. Ubisoft has often been the worst offender of this practice. The past decade has seen it put out standard, gold and ultimate editions for the majority of its games, each with increasingly heinous pricing structures and types of content, ranging from small digital bonuses to season passes that house entire expansions. It is hoping you'll splurge on its more expensive editions under the illusion of value, that you will eventually be saving money in the long run when you finally play its long-awaited expansion, but this just isn't the case. For a bit of context, the standard, gold and ultimate editions of Outlaws cost $70, $110 and $130 respectively. That's without factoring any additional microtransactions either. Months or sometimes even just weeks after launch, I've seen these editions heavily discounted to make up for lacking sales. Or the pre-order period is simply over and publishers can drop their guards and actually sell these bundles for prices that aren't taking advantage of consumers. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was a perfect example of this. Obviously, it didn't set the world on fire, so digital and physical versions of the game were swiftly discounted ahead of the Christmas period so you Ubisoft could earn a few extra pennies. This included the Gold and Ultimate Editions. If you had purchased the game ahead of launch with the promise of additional value to come with future expansions, you'd be pretty miffed. All of a sudden the purchase feels unwarranted, and you would have been better off waiting instead of falling for out-of-pocket marketing tactics. Unfortunately, mainstream consumers who aren't tied to the echo chamber like I am will see an edition like this and likely buy into the empty promises, because why wouldn't they? That's exactly the demographic Ubisoft is trying to convince, and judging by the decade or so we've seen such editions peddled out, it appears to be working. When games are no longer in the spotlight, it is easy to market these editions once again and pick up loads of sales after discount, but I still can't forgive it, even if I can now pick up Watch Dogs Legion and every single piece of content made for it for under a tenner, they were still designed to take advantage of people. Whenever I notice a game has a season pass, I feel suspicious that the base game won't measure up, or I'll burn out before this extra content is even close to being released. From the outset, these games have been designed for post-launch content, where players are all expected to stick around long after reaching the credits, or so they can spend more money and up the good old user retention statistics. I just don't have the energy for that anymore. I much prefer bespoke expansions that feel like naturally unique efforts to flesh out games I love, instead of extending them for some sort of monetary necessity. Star Wars Outlaws isn't offering that, and it sucks that it and so many other single player games of the past decade feel the need to nickel and dime me months before picking up a controller. 